booktube Lynette here and today's video is going to be all about the books that I read in the month of October. First off an apology I'm sorry if you can hear a humming noise in the background I film in the same room as the boiler and the heating has kicked in because it's a bit chilly today and I've got no way to turn it off um, without cooling the house down. Anyway let's get on with it and see if I can talk over it. So the first book that I finished was The Amber Spyglass by Philip Pullman and this is the final book in his Dark Materials series. I read this in October in anticipation of not knowing when the TV series, because they've adapted the whole series into uh, TV production, and the previous two years, November, October, November, December, is when those series have come out. I did find out after I started reading that it's unlikely uh, that this final series is going to be out this year, but I did carry on and read it anyway because I wanted to get to the end of it. The whole series is about Lyra and Will who are children from different worlds. Um, the premise is that there are many, many versions of each world and there are different creatures in each. Um, things have developed in different ways which is what you would expect. And yes it's it's quite interesting there is a battle going on for good and evil it's quite prevalent that it's uh, religion based um although that doesn't bother me quite so much i'm not really i don't really follow religion um so it doesn't i don't see those parts of it that maybe other people would in the same way but i thoroughly enjoyed it um again i still it's one of those series that i know i read and enjoy but then when I get to the end of it, I don't really remember what was going on. So I will probably have to reread it again at some point um, in the future and will probably enjoy rereading it. Uh, it's one of those series that you either read it, love it, remember it, it stays with you or read it, love it and have to reread it to remind yourself why you loved it in the first place. But like I say, it's the culmination of Will and Lyra's story and the underlying premises that really... Um, all things that are good like love will win the day and that's all I can really say about it without spoiling the previous two books um, but yes do recommend it it is more for the 13 plus um, rather than the pre 12 um, but it is definitely YA um, middle grade YA that crossover point so the second book that I finished was a carryover from September and it was another fantasy novel and that is God's Grave by Jay Kristoff. Uh, this is the second book in the Nevernight Chronicles and it's following Mia who is a trained assassin who is trying to get revenge for the murder of her family years before. In this book Mia goes back to the home where she grew up. She is um, en been entered into a gladiator style um, situation and she's training to be a gladiator um or the god's grave equivalent of a gladiator and it's how she goes from there to try and kill the people who were responsible for murdering her father and her mother and younger brother uh there are revelations towards the end of this book that i honestly didn't see coming and i really did quite enjoy it in fact i enjoyed it to the point where um I'm going to the library this week to pick up the final book in the series because I want to finish it. I want to know what happens to Mia and does she finally get her revenge? Um, what happens about all the revelations that have come about? And at the end of this book, like I say, there was a bit of a shock. Um, so again, I want to know what's going on there and I want to continue reading. So it's possible that that's going to be in my November TBR. I didn't put it on my November TBR because it'll just depend on the mood but definitely when I finished this I was in the mood to keep going. So after reading two fantasy novels I was feeling a bit I didn't want any more fantasy um, and I follow a couple of my favourite romance authors on social media and one of them Samantha Towell was quite heavily promoting her books and I felt influenced to pick one of hers up and I picked up Ruin which is the first book in her God series. This is about Zeus Kincaid and Cam Reed. And Zeus is, um, they meet when they're teenagers and fall in love as teenagers. Cam is a ballet dancer. She is working towards going to a prestigious ballet school when she graduates from high school. 
and Zeus is a boxer and he's working on becoming um, a professional boxer and earning his living that way. Zeus' career starts to take off and he's sent abroad and while he's abroad he's influenced by his manager to finish with Cam saying that she is a distraction and this book is then set five years after that um, and it's Zeus coming back into Cam's life unexpectedly uh, for both of them and revelations are made about something that happened and yes it's just it's a feel-good novel um Zeus is your typical alpha protective male uh who just wants to look after Cam and the family and it's about how Cam reconciles the fact that she never fell out of love with him despite being hurt she never really fell out of love with him um she doesn't really believe that he's gonna stick around um, because he didn't before but he's out to prove to her that he's not going to leave her behind again and there's revelations to do with what happened when they broke up and yeah this book I just it, it's like reading a Samantha Tao book for me is like coming home because I love her writing I absolutely adore her writing and rereading is always a fresh experience for me it's never I, I never feel like, you know, I'm just going over old ground. I really do love rereading her books. Again, uh, this is one of the books where she seems to have some kind of insight into my life and she's ripped out a part of my life and used it in her book. And there were quite a lot of words and sentences that meant a lot to me personally. Um, so, yeah, so it's quite an emotional read for me, but it was the palate cleanser that I needed and I was glad I picked it up. However, because um, I was then reading that one, I then felt the need to move on to the next book in the series. And that was Rush. So Rush is about Ares, who is his younger brother. He is a footballer, pro footballer, and um, he plays for a big team in New York. Don't ask me the name of the team. I can't remember. And it's about his relationship with the daughter of the team manager. She is called um, Ari, Ariana. And she is a recovering alcoholic. However, because of things in his past, Ares is not... He doesn't really want to get involved with um, and develop relationships with people who are alcoholics. As far as he's concerned, any promises they make you... Um, can't are never going to be kept and it's just going to end in heartache for everybody involved so there's a lot of push and pull in this because Ares is trying to reconcile the fact that he's falling in love with Ari with the fact that he just can't trust um alcoholics so and Ariana is obviously fighting her addiction she doesn't want to fall off the wagon um she also feels a bit torn because she knows how Aries feels about alcoholics. He makes it perfectly clear um, that he doesn't like alcoholics. And I'm sorry for keep saying the word, but he um, it's uh, she feels that she's got too much to prove. And eventually they learn to trust each other because essentially it's about trust on both sides until an event happens, which then means that actually it draws a wedge between them um this book i'm a little bit troubled with i do love it as much as i love ruin however i do feel that the angst between them and this could have been handled better um it shows how important trust is in a relationship but also it shows how easily trust can be broken or how easily uh trust can be twisted and I do have issues with it. I don't think it was quite done right for me, but I still really enjoyed it. And again, I was glad that I read it. And I just really want to nag Samantha into writing uh, Missy's book, who is the sister of Zeus and Ares. So, you know, it doesn't put me off her reading her books. It's just that this book for me, the ending doesn't quite ring true, um, doesn't quite feel... Mm, yeah, it leaves me feeling a bit meh about it um, altogether. Uh, but yes, um, I do recommend Smart the Towel and like I say, these were a great palate cleanser after reading um, a fair amount of books that aren't based in reality. Um, 
so it was really really good for me to go on and read those hi editing lynette here and i just wanted to say before i talk about the next book there are some mild spoilers for other books i have put a banner across the screen so if you don't want to hear what those are then please um skip to uh, the next section where the banner disappears and you won't hear them apologies uh, if anybody gets caught out and then after reading romance novels i felt ready to go back to fantasy and a book that i've been thinking about reading for a while now but haven't really been saying much about it is fool's assassin by robin hobb this is the first book in the fits and the fall trilogy uh the fits and the fall trilogy is the final series in her Realm of the Elderlings series. And from what I've read so far, uh, <clears throat> this book brings the two storylines from the Six Duchies and from Bingtown and the Rome Worlds together. Um, and I think that will culminate in the final book. But this book is about um, <clears throat> Fitz Chivalry, who is a bastard son of... Um, king in waiting chivalry who that story is told in the first series the farsi trilogy in this book he is known as tom badgerlock um he's living with his wife molly um and they have brought up their sons um or molly's sons from a previous marriage and in this book they go on to um have a child and then the fall comes back into Fitz's life and turns everything upside down. Um, can't really say much other than that because it would spoil it for you. Um, but yes, I was expecting more emotionally from this book. I've been told that this series will is if I found Tawny Man um, emotional and upsetting, which is the third series in the set and the second of uh, Fitz and the Fall series. Um, if I found the Tawny Man series emotional this this series is really going to do it for me so i was expecting more emotionally from this book i don't know whether it's just that i'm not in a place where i'm feeling things that emotionally or whether i was just emotionally ready to handle the the series um but i didn't get quite as upset with it as i thought i might there were moments um but yes, just adored being back in the world of Robin Hobb. I found that the previous series, The Rainwild Chronicles, was a bit of a letdown. Um, so to be back with Fitz and the Fall actually uh, really did. Um, yes, I'm absolutely loving it. And I do keep thinking uh, maybe I should go back once I finish this. Maybe I should go back and restart all over again. And just see if there's hints of things in the previous books um, that I missed because I hadn't read this series. Certainly this series wasn't intended at the point that she wrote the previous series. Um, both the uh, Farseer and Tawny Man trilogies, they, there are very definite endings for Fitz and the Fall in those books. So yes, so I don't know whether there would be things you would pick up on on those earlier books um, that would feed into these. But I just absolutely adore Robin Hobb. She is my favourite fantasy writer. I read a lot, a lot of fantasy in my early 20s. And this is, apart from Rob, uh, Robert Jordan, she is the only author whose books stayed with me and that I remember reading um, from that time. So I do absolutely adore her. And it, even for newbies to fantasy, I would say give Robin Hobb a go. She is very, very detailed, um, but the detail all leads somewhere and it is worth reading. And even the slow parts, it's worth reading through and not giving up because they do eventually end up somewhere where they should be. So I do recommend Robin Hobb um, if you like fantasy or if you want to give fantasy a try. So after I finished Fool's Assassin, uh, I had a bit of time in which I could finish the book club pick for the month. The book club that I belong to is the Just One More Page book club. It's run by Jess McGlynn, who has a YouTube channel herself. And if you want to know more about the book club, go and look it up on Instagram. It is called Just One More Page. For this month, we decided to read The Light Between Oceans. And it's about Tom, who is a lighthouse keeper on a remote island off the coast of Australia and his wife Izzy and what happens after a boat washes up on shore 
with a baby inside and a deceased man. It's a question of morals, it's a question of right and wrong, um, and that then goes right through the book from there. I can't really say anything much more about it because to say anything more would give away what happens. Um, it has some elements in it that I wasn't happy with, but in the end it was a three and a half to four star book for me. I haven't quite settled on a star rating yet, but I was glad I read it. It did make for good discussion um, in the book club because we I don't think any of us really thought it was bad. I think we just kind of had different feelings on the way it was told. Um, so it did make for a good book and I did really enjoy it and I would look up more by that author. Like I say, can't really say anything more about it than that because it would give too much of it away. And then the final book that I finished, once I'd read uh, the Light Between Oceans, I then wanted to go on and finish Fantasy. And because I'd made myself read the book club pick um, because I had time to finish it before our meeting. Um, but what I really wanted to read was the second book in the Fits and the Fall trilogy. And that book is Fool's Quest. Uh, so this carries on right from where Fool's Assassin left off. Um, something has happened and Fool and Fitz are planning um, to do something. Can't really say anything about it because it just would just give it away. Again, it was another book uh, like the first one where I was thinking that I was going to get a lot more emotion out of it than I did. There were moments in this book that I really that did bring a tear to my eye, did make me angry. Um, <clears throat> but I didn't feel as intensely as I usually do with a Robin Hobb book, which I'm not sure. So I've got a bad feeling that the final book is going to hurt. Um, so yes so that that was then my final finish of the month um and again I was thoroughly sucked into her world um couldn't think about anything else after I'd finished it so then I went on and I picked up Assassin's Fate as you can see so I'm filming this on the last day of October so there's no way I'm going to finish this today um I'm only about 100 pages in but yes, Assassin's Fate picks up directly where Fool's Quest left off. And yes, I have a feeling that this is going to be the book where all the emotions happen and where everything gets hurt. Like I say, I've only read 90 plus pages um, already. I'm like, oh my God, what's happening? So I am a little bit feeling it with this book already. And I think it is going to hurt, like I say. Uh, but I'm looking forward to talking about this one at the end of November. Um, it's going to play on my mind and I'm not going to be able to put this down until I finish it. So nothing else is going to get read. This is going to be my workbook as well as my home book, even though it's a brick to carry because it's 800, 900 pages. So yeah, so that was my last book of the month that I started. <clears throat> So those were all the books that I finished in October. How did your October go? Were you basically one genre like me, mostly fantasy, or did you read a variety? Please let me know in the comments box down below. I'd love to chat to you all there. I make videos every week and they go up at Monday at 6.30pm UK time. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.